Good evening, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this evening, we will talk about Mark Golding and, you know, look briefly at his website and to delve into some of the things that he's saying and to question some of the things that he has included that he has put up on his website. So let us look, let me see if I can share my screen with you. And we are going to be heading and diving, deep, doing a deep dive into Mark Golding's website. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. So please hold one moment. All right, so we have here, let me share my screen. And we have here, meet Mark Golding, right? And mark my words. So we have here, meet Mark Golding. Now, Mr. Golding is a leading Jamaican attorney investment banker and politician. He graduated from Oxford University with a first class honors in law and received a Commonwealth scholarship to the University of London for a master's degree in commercial and corporate law. Mark was admitted to the bar in 1990 and joined the prestigious Hart Merchett Fatok Law Firm where he continues to work. Now, his legal specialties included mergers and acquisitions, which I think I've read. So we have mergers and acquisitions, capital markets, taxation, and real estate. Using his legal expertise, he co-founded Daring Bunting and Golding Limited, Jamaica's first private sector investment bank in 1993, becoming one of the leading financial institutions in the Caribbean. And it's interesting that, he, you know, just shortly after his graduation, that he was able to found this investment bank along with Daring and Bunting. Not Daring and Bunting, but Daring and Peter. Peter Bunting, yeah. Yeah, Daring and Bunting. Because he's Mark Holding. <laughs> Why am I mixing up the names here? But that is very interesting that he was able, shortly thereafter, shortly after graduating, that he was able to found this investment bank, which was one of the leading investment banks in the Caribbean. Mark co-founded Proven Investment Limited, a publicly listed investment company. He has served as a director of Grace Kennedy, Limited Caribbean Information, and Credit Rating Services Limited, and the Bank of Nova Scotia under Scotia Limited. I wonder why the font here is so pale. Now, this is what I wanted to pay attention to. Mark was appointed to the Senate of Jamaica in 2007. So after he sold his investment company, Daring Bunting and Golding, he was able to go directly into politics. All right. So we see the revolving door, just like we talk about in the United States, where you have these pharmaceutical companies, you have the politicians who work for them before or work for the oil companies, and then they go into the um into politics and then they go right back into um these investment companies. Now, a lot of times when they go into politics, they are the ones who craft the laws that are amenable to the um to the to to their companies so that is what happens so they send them there to parliament or to congress and they will craft laws that will be amenable that will serve the interests of these um private companies these corporations his profound legislative capability, along with an exceptional understanding of the Jamaican constitution, made him the choice for Jamaica's Minister of Justice 2012 to 2016. So between 2012 and 2016, he was Minister of Justice. Now, he has an exceptional understanding of the constitution, according to what he has placed here. So the fact that he's actually resigning because of his dual citizenship suggests that, you know, do you really have an exception of the standing of the constitution? And why do you, are you renouncing if the constitution says it's okay for you to sit in parliament, right? Being a member of the Commonwealth. He was also named chairman of the legislation committee of cabinet during this four year term under the stewardship, 121 acts of parliament were passed, including the reformation of the Dangerous Drug Act, leading to the decriminalization of marijuana. So he was responsible. He's at the helm of 121 acts of parliament were passed. That's a lot, right? During his reign here, a lot of acts were passed, which I would just say are laws that he crafted or he stood at the helm of, something that we have to understand. 
He has served as the member of parliament for South St. Andrew and is the opposition spokesperson for finance and planning since September 2017. He also sits on the PNP's National Executive Council since 2007 and was the party's treasurer from 2009 to 2012. Right, he was a treasurer and 2017 to 2018. So he has really played a significant role in the PNP, being like a political neophyte at the time, right? Because remember now he was coming just from the investment banking right into politics, and he just you know was a you know he received these high positions as soon as he arrived. He also served as chairman council since 2007 and was the party's treasurer from 2009 to 2012. I think I repeated that. He also served as chairman of the Public Accounts Committee of the House of Representatives. Right? So this is what he is. I think there's something that I wanted to highlight here. In 2020, Mark Golding announced his candidacy for leadership of the People's National Party, and Mark is married to wife Sandra since 1990, and the couple has produced three children. Mark enjoyed music while at Oxford University and later co-founded a music label in the late 1990s in Jamaica. So I would want to know what music label that was. You know, I'm perhaps not so much attuned to what happens in secular music in Jamaica, so I'm not so much sure what music label that he owns that he actually co-founded can somebody enlighten me about that music label and why is it that these things are not being brought forward in the media the media in jamaica is lazy and they're not doing their work they're not doing their jobs and they're not investigating and doing deep dives into what these guys are involved in we have to know because they are going to occupy public office, whether it's Andrew Holness or Mark Golding or it is Dr. Nigel Clark. I think that the media needs to do a deep dive into the lives and the business of the business um, organizations, sorry, with which these guys are actually um, involved. I think that these things need to be um, told to the Jamaican people. But oftentimes, the Jamaican people are quite comfortable with the status quo. We tend to only listen to their platitudinous speeches, and we believe every word that they tell us. And that is the problem, that Jamaicans are not critical thinkers, and we are so partisan in terms of our views that we're not able to separate fact from opinion, right? We like to live in this sort of world of you know, of delusion, where everything is delusional and we think our politicians are kings because kings they are, monarchs they are, and we are the ones who have created those monarchs. Now, when you have a country, including the United States, where people are so much clamoring for one person to be prime minister or president, something is wrong with that because what we should be clamoring for are the strengthening and and the sort of solidifying solidification of our systems, you know, our governmental systems, because these are the things. If the systems are weak, if the systems are weak, if the institutions are weak, then no matter what the person is going to bring to the table, then the country is cannot be run effectively, right? So we should be clamoring for systems for you know effective institutions to be put in place to be formulated, to be engineered, so that we can actually have a better country. And one of the institutions that need to be modernized and to be upgraded is definitely um, the field of journalism. I think that our journalists over the years lack the class, they lack the dedication, and also they lack the ability the capacity to do their jobs. I think that they're just there and they're saying he's presenting to us, he says, she says, and they're entertaining us. They're mainly entertainers and people like to click. So whatever people click on, then that is what they're going to entertain them with. That is a narrative that they are going to bring forward to them. All right, so there is a void in investigative journalism in Jamaica. It's just not happening there. And that is why our politicians are largely getting away with whatever they want to do. Now, let's look at Get the Vision. He has here on the website, I'm still on the website, and it's very, very pale. I think they need to make this thing here more readable. 
um, not sure why the, the printing is like this. So we have, could be that I'm getting blind, I don't know. So we have get the vision. <laughs> Let me make this bigger so that I'll be able to see what is on the, what is on the, um, on the, all right, it's not coming up. So let me leave it alone and I'll get the vision. He's saying here, I'm a proud Jamaican, the son of the soil and a dedicated member of the People's National Party. So he always has to remind us that he's a son of the soil, right? Mark Golding is very, very clear that he's a son of the Jamaican soil. So dare you question his Jamaican-ness? And I'm sure he is Jamaican by birth, um, the fact that his pair, well, he was born on the soil. <laughs> so it means therefore that he is Jamaican and for the most part, he has lived there most of his life. My parents were champions in giving back to Jamaica, especially in the disabilities community. And I continue the family legacy uh, through my own advocacy for disenfranchised persons and persons with disabilities, right? So he's reminding us that he is pro people who are oppressed and the disenfranchised, something that is good and we can knock him for that. But what is he doing? Right. I think that the media need we can't just hear that you're doing these things. Right. It is a, the media who need to let us know whether or not you're doing these things or these are just systems. You know, you're just presenting these empty words to us because that's what the world we live in a very farcical world right now, right? In a fake world where people just present things that they say they do and they don't do them, right? Or if they're doing them, it's not of any great consequence. I am committed, he says here, um, to using the law to protect rather than oppress people, right? Well, <laughs> I guess he's implying that most politicians have used the law or the, law, the laws to oppress people than to protect them. And in that he's right, but Will he be different as evidenced by my legislative performance? So we understand before that we read that he was responsible for the crafting of 121 acts in the parliament, including the Drug Enforcement Act, and which you know included the decriminalization of marijuana. And that's interesting because when we look at the decriminalization of marijuana, we read before and we learned that the laws were not in favor of Jamaican of the ordinary Jamaican, right? Because what they were doing there is actually giving license to Canadian companies, for example, to produce marijuana. So Jamaica, it really is not going to be on the market. We are not going to be the primary producers or one of, even if not the primary producer, we are not going to be one of the primary producers of marijuana. So our economy will not benefit from that decriminalization process, something that we have to understand. So when Mr. Golding is dragging here that he was at the helm and that he was, you know, the one who crafted that law or that act to decriminalize mar marijuana, that is not going to really benefit Jamaica. It will benefit his company, right? He might have gotten some of the, what do they call these things now that you get? The, the license, the, um, the word has eluded me, but there is something that you get, you know, yeah, when you have the license, he, we are not going to definitely get any of that. He might have gotten the license to produce his company, but it would not be publicly run. It will be run by his private corporations. I have a record of strong leadership in my constituency and believe that I am ready to serve as president of the People's National Party. Our common purpose must be the creation of a 21st century Jamaica that exemplifies and upholds the progressive principles of social justice and equality for all Jamaicans. So he has the words of uh, that we ringing from the United Nations of social justice and equality, right? Which means really nothing if what we see in the world, because the more they talk about social justice in the world and equality, the more we see the world becoming unequal and we see citizens being actually denied fair and equal justice. This is the foundational purpose of the party and its socialist roots. Now, the PNP need to let us know if they're still a socialist party. They do say that, but are they really? I don't think after 1989, when Michael Mann came back to office, I think that they shed that sort of their skin, as it were. Right, um, of the socialist 
party, they don't, they no longer believe in socialism. And I think the PNP needs to come out and tell us the truth. Do they believe in capitalism or do they believe in socialism? I do not think, based on the policies that they have pursued since 1989 and beyond, that they are in any stretch of the, by any stretch of the imagination, socialists. They are now full-blown capitalist, and I would say neoliberal capitalists, right? That's who they are. Now, to achieve this, we must live and promote the values of self-discipline, inequalities within Jamaican society, and um, civic responsibility, and caring for and respecting others, right? But that's what he's suggesting here. So it's interesting to note that Mark Oding is suggesting that he is he believes in the principles of socialism. He believes in equal justice, right, and fair, um, you know, fairness in society, and that he has crafted laws, or he will use the laws to protect Jamaicans and not to oppress them. And Mark Oding is one of Jamaica's elites, right, by the fact that all these businesses that he owns. And they're not just ordinary businesses, but they're businesses that are doing very well. And they are spreading their tentacles into all parts of the Caribbean. So we're wondering, how is it that he's going to be able to balance the, the interests in his business, of his businesses, and the interests of country, right? Because will he make sacrifices personal sacrifices for his business, because he's not only in business by himself, he has partners within his business. So I'm sure that they have a common interest that, you know, in, in his business, these men, these partners that are, in, who are involved in his business, I'm sure that they have their agendas. Let's put it that way, right? But the country also needs to have an agenda and to have its own objectives. And oftentimes when we're thinking about or business, they are going to conflict with the goals and the agendas and the objectives of the public sector, of the public economy. And how is he going to straddle between both, between his private businesses and being also a prime minister? I think that Golding is involved in many things, right? I understand he has charities in England, he has charities in Jamaica, he has organizations, he is involved in a whole lot of things. How does one man, how is he able to manage all of these charities and corporations and business enterprises that, you know, that are in quite a bit of the world, you know, parts of, all parts of the world, in England and also parts of the Caribbean. And we don't know where he might also have other business enterprises. And it's for the media to delve into these issues and they're not doing it. They're not doing it because they're afraid. They're afraid. And um, I don't know if I can blame them fully because we are a violent society. And in recent times, we have been seeing attacks on journalists and threats are being made on their lives. So we cannot blame them sometimes for not wanting to delve deeper into some of the issues that will afflict that will affect, I should say, the Jamaican people. So these are some of the issues I wanted to bring forward to you. And to and for the media, to, you need to ask the media, what are the 121 acts um, of which, in which Golding participated? The 121 acts that were passed in parliament, in the Jamaican parliament, during the time in which Mark Golding was Minister of Justice between 2012 to 2017. Before I end this video also, the, the happenings in the United States, the political events that we see happening, unfolding before eyes in the United States are going to affect the Caribbean. And they're going to affect the Caribbean nations very, very profoundly. It's going to have a profound effect up on the Caribbean region, you have to understand that. I notice that whenever I publish, I you know upload videos on the on America and its political machinery, that the videos are not watched as much. I know that YouTube is not promoting these videos. So you have to check my, you know, practically every day I upload a video, right? So please keep, please turn on your post notifications 
like the videos, subscribe to the videos, comment so that the algorithms will push the videos along, right? Because you're living in this very narrow world thinking that, you know, Mark Golding is there or Andrew Honus and whatever is happening in Washington will not affect Jamaica and the region, but it is going to have profound effects, okay, upon where, how we are going to move forward, who is going to be president, whether it's Joe Biden or it is Donald Trump. I mean, the same policies will be there because I don't think there is going to be any, there's no great difference between Donald Trump and, and uh, Biden, right? They're now becoming kings, right? We can call them now King Biden and King Trump, right? Because that is who they are. The, the United States is no longer the democracy that we think it is, right, that we have brainwashed ourselves into believing. So make sure that you watch the videos on the U.S. political landscape. What perhaps we can do, maybe I need to select a day or days when I upload videos on the United States politics, and then you can watch it and you can make your comments and so that the videos can be pushed along. Because what happens if there are no comments. If there, are, if the likes are very, very low, then the videos are not going to be pushed along. The algorithms won't share them with people uh, because that is how it, the game is now being played. So you must know, but um, if you desire of, for me to publish videos on the United States political landscape, then please put yes in the comment section and so that I will continue with it. I mean, if I see that you have given me a hundred likes on this video, um, at least that is a very low and you not, sometimes you barely have even seven likes on one video, right? But put a hundred likes on this video so that the video can be moved along and also we can publish other videos that will affect Jamaica and also the Caribbean region at large. It's time now for us to move away from this narrow perspective and begin to think much more broader or much more broadly i should say thank you so much for joining i hope that you will like again you'll share and you subscribe and remember to leave a comment at the end of each video thank you so much for watching see you in the next video